This morning on our continuing series, Forever Young, A Guide to Life After 50, the final day of our special series in plastic surgery. All week long, you watch today's show senior producer Susan LaSala through every step of her experience with cosmetic surgery. This morning, Susan and her surgeon, Dr. Sherelle Aston, are here to answer your email questions and some of my questions as well. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning nice Katie. to see. Have you gotten a big response to this series? I'm just curious. Lots of calls. Well, a lot of people have seen it and commented, of course. Yeah, well, it's been very, very interesting. And obviously, Susan, we talked to you briefly yesterday, but the big question a lot of folks want to know is, knowing what you know now, would you do it over again? Um, this is not a sales pitch for Dr. Aston. The answer, the short answer is yes, I would do it again, but with Dr. Aston and his whole team. And that's very important, I think, for the viewers, too, because it's not just Dr. Aston, it's because he is the artiste, it is his office staff, it's the doctors he surrounds himself with. It, it's the whole package, and I think that's very important when someone looks. And Dr. Aston allowed me to remain myself. I mean, right. I don't have the deer in the headlights, I don't have the F-16 look. <laughs> and, <laughs> but about and, two and a half months ago, I know that you were pretty miserable. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> and you describe it, you say you don't have children, but you right. think it's like childbirth, that people kind of have selective memory and that you don't really remember how uncomfortable you were during the recovery process. It was, it, and doctor, everything that happened to me, Dr. Aston walked me through the whole procedure. He said, here's how you're gonna feel at two weeks, here's how you're gonna feel at a month. And the first couple of weeks, I mean, he was right. It wasn't the worst pain I've ever had in my life, but it was pretty uncomfortable. But he would walk you through it so you- Knew what you, to expect. You sort of knew what to expect, but I mean, you're never compared to, feeling like you've just been hit by a train. Right. <laughs> now, you, you, uh, we've got before pictures oh, of great. you. Oh, great. You I want know. some? Would you like to have a few? <laughs> yeah. we, can, we, sure. have a, we can arrange that. Anyway, <laughs> one of the things you did, and we, you've got, had a mm -hmm. facelift to get rid of what you called your turkey neck. You also had a little chin mm -hmm. implant. Um, so it is a pretty remarkable difference. What is the biggest change in your face that you've noticed, Susan? I, I think probably what you said, because you know, you look in, in the mirror, every day and I'm thinking, well, do I really look that different? And then, you know, I see my neck here, what Dr. Aston did, and here, and up in here. How long will this last? Well, it's really going to last forever from the standpoint of you, you've got to consider that what we've done will make her better for the rest of her life. But obviously in 10 years, she's not going to look as good as she does today. But for the rest of her life, she will benefit from the surgical procedure. Now, one of the most commonly asked questions is, of course, how much did this cost? Not much for you, Missy. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> but for the average person, I know it yeah. varies from region to yeah. region, right, Dr. Aston? Can you just give us a ballpark range of some of the things that Susan had done? Well, in New York, for a facelift, the fee is probably six to eighteen thousand dollars. Eyelids are six to eight thousand. Forehead is is six to eight or ten thousand dollars. But keep in mind, every facelift is not the same. Some mm -hmm. ladies will take twice as long as others to perform the procedure and you have to individualize the operation for the person. Right. So that's part of the reason why the fees range, say, in my office, but around the country, the fees range also. California and New York are probably the highest fees. And when it came to your fee, the Today Show very generously footed the bill. Isn't that wonderful? Not Dr. Aston, by the way. Um, a lot of emails also focused on how you find a reputable surgeon, because that's so important. What is the best way to do that? And are there a lot of quacks out there operating on people's faces? Katie, that's such an important question. You know, there are no state or federal regulations that determine who can call themselves a plastic surgeon. There are people with very little training credentials in actually performing a plastic surgery. You want to find a plastic surgeon who's certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery. Five words, the American Board of Plastic Surgery. There's some sound alike op uh, organizations. American Board of Plastic Surgery and the American Society of Aesthetic Plastic Surgery represents a board certified plastic surgeons who have a special interest in cosmetic surgery and we have their 800 number they'll give you a list of surgeons in your town that you can uh, contact for a consultation and also don't a lot of surgeons have books photographs of their work and isn't it a good idea to talk to some people who had who have had procedures done or surgery done by that surgeon? Well, talking to a friend who's had surgery is certainly a good reference point. You can talk to your family doctor because he knows who's reputable in the community. Photographs are, are not always the answer. Mm -hmm. 
because they can be doctored themselves. Photographs can be doctored themselves. And mm -hmm. obviously a surgeon's going to pick the best results he's ever had to try to show to a prospective so patient. So certainly don't use those alone to trust a Photographs plastic alone surgeon. are not the answer. Kim from Georgia wanted to know if you did would do it again. You answered that right. question earlier. So let's move on to Nancy from California. She says, what happens if the doctor takes too much skin uh, away from your eyes and your, and your eyes can't close correctly? after the surgery is it correctable well oh gosh that would be terrible so you always i guess she's talking about that the look of perpetual surprise yeah. deer in the headlights that kind of thing well first That's of all lovely. that is a, a, a tough problem to correct it shouldn't happen in the hands of a, bro a board certified surgeon someone who's performing this mm -hmm. procedure over and over again in severe cases, there are things that you can do. You could actually put a little skin graft on the upper lid so they could close. But that mm. would be a very, very unusual occurrence. So try to find a surgeon that doesn't make that mistake. Benson from Chicago wants to know, when a man is considering a facelift, are there any special considerations versus a woman? Yes. Well, as I said before, there's special considerations for every patient, every woman also. But men have skin that's thicker. They have shorter hair. You have the sideburn pattern to deal with. And so we do use special considerations in placing the scars. But other than that, what you do under the skin, if you will, is pretty similar to males. It's just that it's more difficult for the surgeon to perform, really. Do you find a lot of more men are coming in for plastic surgery these there days? There are more men having plastic surgery today. No question about it. Now, Sarah from Wisconsin wrote, why didn't the producer, that would be you, Susan, choose laser surgery instead? Why not? Lasers can't do what we did for Susan. Lasers are okay for resurfacing the skin, trying to take some of the fine wrinkles away. You can get minimal, minimal tightening of the skin with very aggressive laser treatment, but a laser cannot lift the face. All right, also a lot of people wanted to know about keloid scarring. I have that problem, even though it's usually typical for African Americans where you're, where you're over scar. If that happens, can that be corrected? Well, keloids are very rare. In, in your skin type for sure. People who have darker skin, thicker skin, redder skin, have a higher incidence of scars that are not the best. Keloids are difficult to correct. And really quickly, at what age should you get plastic surgery? Some people wrote and said they heard the younger, the better, or it's better to err on the side of being a little bit younger. You shouldn't have any procedure until you have the signs of aging that will benefit. But in general, younger skin, younger tissues respond better initially are going to last longer as time goes on. All right. Well, Dr. Sherelle Aston and Susan LaSala, Should thank I ask you so for a much. Raise now, do you uh, think? I, I don't think so. I think you got a big <laughs> bonus with the surgery, if you know what I'm saying. Thank you, Susan. Thanks, Dr. Aston. Thanks, if you'd like more information on our series on cosmetic surgery, you can visit our website at today.msnbc.com.